Folks, we're here today to give glory to the living God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that paid for your sins on the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, who created all things for himself. You were created for the Lord Jesus Christ. You were created to glorify him today. He's blessed you abundantly. You need to give him glory. You need to give him praise and thanks because he is worthy. The Bible said God is worthy of our praise because He is the sustainer of all life. Jesus Christ, the creator of the heavens and the earth that died for our sins, and rose again from the dead. I'll give you some of these back. That's fine. You can take those for now. I'll just use these. But, but folks, the Bible says to praise the Lord. It is good to give, to sing praises unto our God. It is pleasant and praise is comely. It's it's a beautiful thing to give praise unto God. It's a glorious thing to give praise unto the living God for all of His works. Folks, you are and were created for His glory. That's Jesus Christ, the Creator, the heavens and the earth. You were created to give Him glory today. And He is worthy of your glory. He's worthy of praise. That name which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, that name by which you are saved if you call upon. You can be saved by the name of Jesus Christ. That If you call upon that name today, you can have eternal life. And it's not just speaking His name with your mouth and, and not understanding with your heart, but having that revelation that He is the Son of the living God, that Jesus Christ is the Creator of the heavens and the earth, that He is God in the flesh, that He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. That's why he was conceived in the womb of Mary. That's why he was virgin born, that he did not have the sin nature that you and I have. Christ was the sinless, holy one of God, sir, the Lamb of God, the righteous and just one that did no sin, neither was any guile in his mouth. Christ never sinned. It was impossible for Christ to have sinned. He could not have sinned because He was the only begotten Son of God. But folks, we're all born in sin. We, we are conceived in sin and iniquity. To, said that as our mother conceive us, we're born with the presence of sin, the lusts of our flesh that explains to us today why we do things we're ashamed of, why we do things that we want to hide, why we do things that we don't want anybody to know about because of shame, because of sin. And the wages of sin is death, the Bible tells you. That's why we're here today to tell you that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, that God gave Himself on the cross for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity. That's the gospel today, folks. This Creator that upholds you, that keeps your breath in your body, that gives you consciousness, the source of, the, of every living thing that is designed and created by His wisdom and, and expresses His wisdom. The glory of the heavens declare this living God today, He's the one that died for your sins in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ. He's the one, the Creator, that came in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh so that you and I could be reconciled to God. You and I could be saved from our sins by the mercies of God, by the blessings and grace of God, saved from the penalty of sins, which is hell, saved from the effects of sin, folks, which is just destructive and, and corrosive. It destroys families. It destroys your mind. It destroys your heart. It destroys this country. is being destroyed because of the sins of the nation, because of our sins. And folks, we've got to repent of our sins. We've got to turn from our sins and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, ma'am, the Son of the living God, God in the flesh. He's the only salvation for our nation, Jesus Christ. So we're here to praise and to lift up that name which is above every name. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus Christ because that's the way you're going to get to heaven. That's the way this country is going to recover itself from the destruction that we have placed ourselves in. Folks, our country is being defiled, it's being destroyed with Marxism and, and philosophies of men that have forsaken the Lord and forsaken God and we've established lies. We've put our trust in lies and false doctrines and philosophies of men that are robbing this country of the blessing of God. 
And we need to turn back to God as a nation. We need to turn back to God as a community. You need to turn back to God as a family. And you need to turn back to God as a person. Because each one of you depends upon the living God and one day you're going to die and you're going to have to give an account of your lives, what you did with your lives. What have you done with your lives? That's the answer that God is going to have to bring into account of the day of judgment. What have you done with your life? What have you done with the time that God has given you on this earth? What have you done with the blessings that God has bestowed freely upon you? The eyes that He's given you to see, the ears to hear, and to, to hear the, your children's voice, to hear beautiful music, to hear His creation, to see the blessings of God with your eyes. These are these are things God has freely given you that you wouldn't give all the money in the world for. God's given to you freely. You wouldn't give all the money in the world for your eyes, for your ears. But Jesus Christ, the unspeakable gift that God has given for your soul, because your soul is precious to God, that He gave His only begotten Son, that God knew that we couldn't ascend up into heaven, we couldn't save ourselves from death, we couldn't save ourselves from His judgment, we can't recover ourselves from the condemnation that we have put ourselves under because of our sins. But Christ came in a body of flesh. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, was conceived by the Holy Ghost in the womb of Mary so that He, by the grace of God, could taste death for you, sir, for me, for the sins of the world. And if you can call upon the name of Jesus Christ, you can be saved. You can be washed from your sins. Keep us in prayer, man. You can be saved from your sins. But folks, so many people have... They're using the blessings of God and they're walking on away from God. They're using the blessings of God for their selfish ends, to their self-serving ends. They want to walk in the lust of their flesh. They want to utilize their eyes to lust after things. They want to use their heart to, for evil imaginations. They want to use their minds in, in pride and in, in lies. And they want to make lies their refuge. And they want to believe that God is not going to judge them for their sins. Folks, there's no reason to believe that. The Bible is very clear that God is going to bring every work into judgment. When the Lord returns, the Bible says that He's coming to bring judgment. That the Lord God Almighty is going to bring every work with every secret thing. He's going to judge the works of men's hearts. He's going to judge the secrets of men's hearts. He's going to judge the idle words that have come out of our mouths. The Bible says, Every idle word that a man shall speak, he shall give an account to God in the day of judgment. And folks, not only that, God is going to hold you an account for not believing in His promises for not believing in His Word, not believing in the revelation of God. We're going to have to give an account one day for changing the truth of God into a lie and believing philosophies of men and believing Darwinianism and believing Marxism and believing David Hume and Frederick Nietzsche and all these philosophers and Christopher Hitchens following what they said and Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins and we've made them our heroes. we made them our saviors. But but folks, they can't save you from the judgment of God. They can't save you from the damnation of hell. Only Jesus Christ can do that. Only Jesus Christ can save us from the wrath that is coming upon the children of disobedience, among whom we all had a conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature the children of wrath. The Bible says we're the children of wrath because... We walk in our selfish lusts. We think that this life is about us. This life is about what I want to do. This life is about what God has designed you to do. God is the author of life. God, your body is not yours. It belongs to God. Your mind belongs to God. It depends upon God. Your consciousness depends upon God. You want to pretend like it depends upon the laws of physics. But the laws of physics depend upon the living God. And if your mind was dependent upon those, you couldn't, you couldn't think freely. You would just be a, a flesh robot. But folks, God's made you in the, His image with the ability to think. And He says to reason with Him, though your sins be as scarlet, they can be as white as snow, the Scripture says. 
though we have sinned and though we've transgressed the commandments of God and though we've hurt so many people in our lives, pray for us, sir. Though we've hurt so many people in our lives, God is willing to forgive if we repent. If we turn from our ways, if we turn our hearts from our sins and cry out to the living God, God can wash us from our sins. Jesus Christ took our sins upon His own body on the tree, on the cross. He bore our sins in His own body on the cross that we being dead and the sins could live unto righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, you can live unto righteousness. You don't have to be the servant of sin. You can be the servant of righteousness. You can live your life in holiness. You can serve God all your lives instead of serving the world. See, folks, you're either serving God or you're serving the world. You're either walking according to the revelation of God or you're walking according to the what this world has conformed you into. You might flatter yourself that you're a free thinker. You might flatter yourself that, that you are an independent thinker. But folks, if you're not a Christian, you're not an independent thinker. You've been brainwashed by the culture. You've been deceived by the propaganda that is being spewed out continually all the days of your life, you have absorbed these things. If you're not a Christian, you're brainwashed by this culture. You're not independent. If you're not a Christian seeking the living God today, you're not independent. You are, you are believing lies that have been embedded in your mind and embedded in your heart through public schools and through college. And, and so you're ignorantly walking in these things and you've not challenged these views. You've just accepted them. you just swallowed them like a fish would swallow a bait. And folks, you've believed lies and you've been manipulated by this world if you're not a Christian. If you don't call upon the name of Jesus Christ today, if you don't call upon the name of Jesus Christ, ma'am, He rose again from the dead. Christ can save you from all sins, ma'am. Christ can save you from all sins. But folks, you're, you're walking today in the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. If you're not walking in the grace of God, if you're not walking in the spirit of God, you're walking according to the course that this world has set before you. Gentlemen, Christ died for your sins, rose again. Don't die in your sins. Walking in your lusts, thinking that the only purpose you're on this earth, sir, bless the Lord for His mercy today, that the only... You think that the only reason you're on this earth is to fulfill and to gratify the lust of the flesh and to be in, go from one inflamed lust to the next. To walk from one inflamed lust to the next. And folks, that's not why you're on this earth. You're on this earth to glorify and to bring pleasure to the grace and the mercy of God. You're here to please God today. God has designed you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made in your mother's womb if you survive it. If you can survive your mother's womb these days, because we kill babies by the millions, folks. And we rejoice in that. We think that's a good thing today. That's how deluded we've become in this culture. That we kill babies and think that we're doing God's service. But folks, you've been created to, to serve the living God. You depend upon Him. You're walking on the Word of God right now by trusting in what you think are the laws of physics. They're actually, the laws of physics are upheld by the Word of His power. And you can try to dismiss the living God. You can try to cast Him aside and say that you don't need God today, but your breath is in your body because of God. God upholds you by the word of His power. And, and were this true and living God, the only God that you have made yourselves the enemy of, were He to call your soul into account today, you would, you would in hell wake up your eye, lift up your eyes being in torment. You'd wake up in hell. It's but for the mercies of God that you've not been destroyed, that your soul has not been lost yet. It's because Christ rose from the dead so that you can have the chance and the hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's your hope, is in Jesus Christ. Your hope is not in, is not in atheism. Atheism is foolishness. The fool that said in his heart there is no God. Fools hate knowledge. That's where atheism is going to get you into utter and complete skepticism. Atheism leads to absolute ignorance. That's where it leads, folks. But Christ rose from the dead so that you could know that you have eternal life, that you can have the promise of God, that you can know that when you step out of this life, 
that you're stepping into the promises of God. You're stepping into heaven. You're going to be at the right hand of God in Jesus Christ because Christ rose again from the dead and ascended up into heaven so that you and I could have the assurance that if we die, we can be present with the Lord. We can have that assurance today. But most people would rather have the assurance that they're going to have a good retirement. And they lay up treasures on this earth where moth and rust corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Whether those thieves are in the Federal Reserve destroying the value of your savings or whether those thieves are in the government deciding to vote on whether how much of your money they're going to let you keep. But folks, if you're laying up your treasures on this earth, you're not going to have much hope. But if you're laying up your treasures in heaven, if you're laying up your hopes in heaven, if your affections are in heaven where Christ, sir, sitteth at the right hand of God, then you can have the assurance, you can have the confidence that you know that what Jesus has done for you, what Jesus has accomplished for you, can result in your ascending up into heaven when you die. That whether we depart from this body and we're just present with the Lord or whether God sends His angels to carry us into His bosom, we know, we know that we have eternal life because Christ gave Himself to redeem us from all of our iniquities, to recover us from the destruction of sin. Folks, sin is destroying you that you don't even realize it. You don't even know what it's doing to you. They just recently discovered neuroplasticity. You should look into that. You're changing your brain by lusts. Walking in addictions, you're changing yourself into an animal. You're making yourself dependent upon one pleasure to the next. You're serving pleasures, diverse pleasures and lusts and you're literally changing yourself but you can recover yourselves from this destruction if you turn to the Lord if you let Christ cleanse you by his blood so if you let the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost transform your heart and renew your mind God is able to do it ma'am God can save you from whatever things in the past haunt you Whatever things in the past haunt you to this day when you lay down in your bed and you regret and you grieve over those sins, the blood of Christ can free you, can set you free and that there's no condemnation, that if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart and He can set you free from those, those lusts, those memories, of those painful memories that we have brought into our lives because of our disobedience to God. God can save you from those things. Folks, there's freedom in Christ. There's deliverance in Christ. Folks, you don't have to be haunted by your past. You don't have to be haunted by those hurts and those pains that you inflicted upon your children and upon your spouse and upon your friends when you betrayed them. All those things that we've done to those people, we can be set free by the power of the living God. God can wash us from those things. Folks, there's deliverance in Jesus Christ. There's liberty in Jesus Christ. Christ hath set us free, sir, from the power of sin. Jesus Christ is the hope of eternal life. And folks, his, his name is worthy to be praised. The Bible says that he healeth up the broken in heart. He bindeth up their wounds. God heals the broken hearted today, folks. Jesus can heal you. With his stripes, you can be healed of your backslidings. You can be restored. True religion, sir, is to serve God and to be undefiled from the flesh, from the world, sir. True religion, look up James chapter 1. It tells you what true religion is, to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Folks, we can be unspotted from the world. We can be unspotted by the world, from the world by the mercies of God, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But are you willing to take up your cross today and follow Christ? Or are you just still going to allow yourselves to be drawn away and, and lured off like a like an animal that's drawn about by, by a leash. Sin is dragging you along like by a leash. You're like a fish that has a hook in its jaw that's being dragged where you don't want to go. Sin is going to take you where you don't want to go. Sin is going to drag you and ashore and destroy you, folks, but Christ can save you. Call upon the name of the Lord and you can be saved. Folks, Jesus Christ is mighty to save today. He can take that hook of sin out of your jaws and keep you from the destruction that snare of sin and snare of death 
Christ can set you free. Folks, there's no hope apart from Christ, but there's mighty hope in the Lord Jesus Christ today. Christ is mighty to save. We've got a mighty God. The Lord our God is a mighty God today. He's able to save from all sins. He's able to set you free from addictions. You may have come down to the beach to try to forget about your pain, to forget about the burdens of life, but folks, you've got something better than this beach. You've got the hope of eternal life, that golden, that shore of heaven, that crystal sea that you can have the hope of when you die. Don't you want the hope of eternal life, sir, when you die that's in Jesus Christ? Don't you want that eternal hope? Folks, God heals the brokenhearted. He binds up the those that are wounded. He brings healing to your soul today, your soul that has been injured because of divorce, because of adulterous relationships or fornication, that you've this hookup culture that you've been injured and hurt in and you've hardened yourself against love and against, against other people that you don't want to hurt you today. You've been injured by so many people through your life. Come to Christ. And the Bible says He will gently lead you, that He will bear you up, that He will bind up the brokenhearted, Jesus Christ. He's a friend today that can stick closer than a brother. Jesus Christ is one that can heal the brokenhearted, sir. He can wash you from the sins. He can wash you from your sins. But folks, if we embrace our sins and we cast aside the hope of salvation, sin, folks, will be our destruction. Sin will destroy us. And so many people today, instead of coming to Christ, they flee to false doctrines. They run to philosophies of men. Sir, what, what do you not believe about Jesus Christ today? What is it that would keep you from your faith in Christ? So many people today think, oh, we're just, we're just physical matter. That's all that exists. We're just, you know, Darwinian evolution or Hegelian evolution. We just evolved. You know, we're just this continually evolving mass of flesh and, and rock and mud. And that's all it is, just changing and evolving over eons and over centuries. Folks, how meaningless is that? If that were true, you would never even know it. You couldn't even know it were true. If you claim to know it, then that disproves it. Because if you believe in materialistic evolution, you could never have come to the knowledge of that as a doctrine. Because all you are is physical matter that you don't control. Your brain would be something you can't control. And good folks, the, the fact that you would believe that is evidence against it. The only true faith is in Jesus Christ, gentlemen, ladies. The only true faith the only truth is in Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. 